Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive unless the Lord does raise the house in vain, its builders strive. To you who boast tomorrow's gain, tell me what is your life? A mist that vanishes at dawn, all glory be to Christ. Thank you for listening to today's edition of the Open Bible Podcast. My name is Ethan Jones, and today I'll be your host. Today is the 22nd edition of our daily devotional series through the Proverbs for this month of January. And as with all of the episodes of this podcast, our hope is that this series would serve to the edification of our community of believers in Pinocchio, as well as anyone beyond who might be listening. So wherever you are today, I want to welcome you. My prayer is that today's devotion will truly be an encouragement to you in your walk with the Lord today. Today's passage for consideration comes from Proverbs chapter 22 which reads that a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and a favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of all of them. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple goes on and suffers for it. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the crooked, Whoever guards his soul will keep far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of his fury will fail. Whoever has bountiful lies will be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. Drive out a scoffer, and strife will go out, and quarreling and abuse will cease. He who loves purity of heart, and whose speech is gracious, will have the king as a friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the words of a traitor. The sluggard says, There is a lion outside, I shall be killed in the streets. The mouth of the forbidden woman is a deep pit. He who with whom the Lord is angry, will fall into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. Incline your ear and hear the words of the wise, and apply your heart to my knowledge. For it will be pleasant with you if you keep them within you if all of them are ready on your lips, that you may be in the Lord. I have made them known to you today, even to you. Have I not written for you thirty sayings of counsel and knowledge, to make you know what is right and true, that you might give a true answer to those who sent you? Do not rob the poor because he is poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and rob of life those who rob them. Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Be not one of those who gives pledges and puts up security for debts. If you have nothing to pay, why should your bed be taken from under you? Do not move the ancient landmark that your fathers have set. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Now much Proverbs comes towards those who do what Paul warns against in Romans chapter 7, doing what they know is wrong and failing to do what they know is right. And this Proverbs follows a similar theme. In some ways, Solomon states the obvious, things that as people who know God should be plain. And yet we can so often neglect what is wise and virtuous and be enticed towards what is wrong. So Solomon gives instructions to us, saying, Have I not written for you thirty sayings of counsel and knowledge to make you know what is right and true, that you may give a true answer to those who sent you? 
and in this passage and all prior passages that have been explored, Solomon has given a clear instruction when he's telling us, do not just take in this knowledge, but apply it to your life, that you would be marked by such things. That righteous living honors God, and it comes with great benefit in seeing the fruits that come in righteousness. He says, incline your ear and hear the words of the wise. And apply your heart to my knowledge, for it will be pleasant with you if you keep them within you, if all of them are ready at your lips. So let's seek to apply the words of wisdom given here. This chapter could easily be broken up in, into more, but for our purposes, we can see Solomon driving home two major points here. First, that we should strive to have a good reputation, in that we are known for our holy living. Second, we should train up our children in the way that they should go. And this could be extended to others as a whole. But immediately this chapter starts and we are told that a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold. He's telling us to hold a name which brings joy to others, which is held in high esteem by others. A name that is marked by the things that we've done for our good business dealings or carrying ourselves well, caring for others. It is a good thing to be honored by others. Simply having the name Jones, for instance, does not have any power in itself. But there are reputations built by my father, which bring favor, which I can pass on to my children in carrying myself well as well. Solomon tells us further, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor in this life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the crooked, but whoever guards his soul will keep far from them. So how we conduct ourselves, it is a way in which we can honor the Lord. And it comes with worldly repercussions, both in reward and in curse. So likewise, this stems into our relationships and who we associate with on a deep level. There are many in the world who are sinfully drawn to violence, for instance. It is a terrible thing, and it's an awful thing to even associate with such people, as we are told. And we are, we are told here specifically, thorns and snares are in the way of the crooked. Whoever guards his soul will keep far from them. These are the people of which we are told that they rob the poor because they are poor, and they crush the afflicted at the gate. But we are told whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. Whoever has bountiful eyes will be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. So we have a command here on righteous living. We have curses that we are told of. They come with rebellion. But we are told that he who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king as a friend. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Righteous living does not guarantee a perfect life, but it does normally come with reward. And probably the biggest reward here is setting an example for our children. As we noted earlier, we can see the fruits of our labor transfer into their lives. We hear from Solomon that if we train up a child in the way that he should go, even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. So then, as we go on with the rest of our days, let us incline our ears, as he says, and hear the words of the wise, and apply our hearts to what has been given to us now. For it will be pleasant with us if we keep them within us if all of them are ready at our lips. Now, some of you might be listening today and you'll be living a righteous life, one that's dedicated towards God and still things don't look perfect for you. And you're not experiencing necessarily the, the prosperity that we hear of this in this passage. And maybe your kids aren't following in the way that you're setting out for them. Whatever it is, let this passage still be a comfort to you, to push you towards righteous living, even in the face of pushback. Because again, our righteousness is not 
based on the rewards we receive, but out of love for God. Don't do it for what you might receive back from God, but do it because you love what is good and hate what is evil. So our responsibility in these days, especially, is to share the gospel, to still seek to go out and make disciples of all nations, and that includes our children and our family, to share the good news and plant those seeds of faith, and trust God to do the rest, knowing that he is the good shepherd who brings all of his own to himself. And we can trust as well that those seeds that take root, the Lord will bring that to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus. So take hope today and take comfort in our good Savior who gives us good commands for our good. Blessings on you all today.